This video will demonstrate an all software solution in order to send Morse code over the internet using Ubuntu 12.04 on ICW. We're going to use the Pulse Audio sound system in order to accomplish this. A couple things you're going to need to do is uh, download two or three more things after in addition to those that you downloaded on the first video. And you'll need to watch the first video in order to understand this one. So if you can watch this video right here, how to send Morse code over the internet on Ubuntu 12.04, the basic setup using Pulse Audio. That will key you into the essential ingredients and then after watching that one, come back and watch this one. You'll have already downloaded most of what we need. Mumble, the GNOME uh, uh, ALSA mixer, and the PA Pulse Audio Volume Control. In addition to that now, we're going to need FL Digi. So go to your Ubuntu Software Center and type in FL Digi, and you'll get that. The other one you're going to need is P Pulse Audio Preferences. Pulse Audio P-R-E-F. Eh. P Pulse Audio P-R-E-F. There we go. And go ahead and download this one here. I've already got that. What is going to be important for that one is it has simultaneous output. So you want to add a check mark to that. And that's going to give us a choice so that we can not only send Pulse Audio, the CW Audio Tones from FL Digi, through Pulse Audio to the sound card so we can hear it, but also over to Mumble on a virtual sound card. The virtual sound card we're going to use is an ALSA loopback and it's in the else it's called loopback analog stereo it's already in the kernel so all you have to do to activate it is type in sudo mod probe sound a loop hit enter and then enter your password or if you just want this to load all the time which is what I've done go into the file system you'll have to go sudo edit We'll only we'll do it this way. sudo g edit and then you'll have permissions to add something here. You're going to go into the etc modules. So we're going to open file system etc and then go to modules and I already have a couple things here but in, underneath this RTC I added sound -a loop so every time my computer boots it adds this ALSA loop module which I can then use and I don't have to do the pseudo mod probe so we have this loop back available now and I'll show you how that goes here in a second so and on PA preferences we've added the simultaneous output those are the only other two you need. So FL Digi and then Pulse Audio Preferences. And then bring up FL Digi. And you'll have to do some configuring. So op mode, of course, select CW. Then go into configure modems. In audio. In the devices, you're going to just check mark Pulse Audio. Settings, this is kind of comes stock. If you have a really fast computer, you can use this one, but this is good enough for the converter. Make sure just leave that alone. This, I have it on both left and right channels. So we'll click the second one from the top. Click Save. Then go to Modems in general under CW, CW general. Then you can adjust this transmit slider can go from 25 down to 5 and the upper limit we have set here is 50 so if you wanted to you could take that up as high as you want to think it goes up to 200. So that's how fast FL Digi can send. Maybe you got some meteor scatter. <laughs> Okay, the default is a very interesting feature. When you hit the star key in the number pad, 
whatever speed FL Digi is sending at, say you're sending at 30. So if we were down here around 30 or so, you hit that star button, it's going to slow down to 20 until you hit that star button again. So if you needed to send something, and it was going to be difficult for the other person to copy it, hit the star button and then start typing it out and then hit it again once you want to return to the original speed. Click Save. Then go to Timing and you can adjust these parameters however you want. We have two raised cosines to choose from, Hanning and Blackman. Click Save when you're done. Don't worry about this. This is for transmitting to a rig. That's the main setups that we're going to need. Click Save again. Close it out. Then click this down here, this TR button. That's the transmit. Now we should be able to hear something. Then we click Pulse Audio Volume Control. And now it's going to show us everything that's active. You won't see FL Digi in here until you hit that transmit button. We don't need the null mi also mixer for right now since we're using pulse audio mostly. So if this transmit button is red, then you're in transmit mode. And on the playback tab of the pulse audio volume control, it says that it's sending to the sound card only. And this is the volume that it's sending it at. So if you click that and you click simultaneous output, it'll go to both the sound card and the loopback. And why we need the loopback is on Mumble, we're going to monitor that loopback sound card, and then whatever that monitor hears is what Mumble's going to send out. And that's the secret of being able to use the system that way. So you can hear whatever FL Digi is sending and Mumble can pick it up without having to use Stereo Mix or Wave Out on your sound card, which means that Mumble's going to pick up everything that's on the sound card. But this way it only picks up, pick, it picks up only what it hears on that loopback sound card, which is a virtual audio cable. And right now it's just going to be what we send with FL Digi. So let's go ahead and select that on playback for FL Digi simultaneous output. So now we should still be able to hear it and it will also go over to the mumble settings here. So you should, you should see it in this VU meter. And to set the volume correctly, you want that to come out to about right there where my cursor is at. And the, the pulse audio volume control, so let's turn that up, the output of FL Digi up a little bit. Let's turn it up to there. And let's see what happens. There we go. That's about the right spot. Okay, that's all there is to that. So we have Pulse Audio selected as the interface. Let's go over the mumble settings here for this setup. Is it like the original? It's all Pulse Pulse Audio, so you don't have to change anything in the original Pulse Audio video uh, instructions. In the output, it's Pulse Audio and the same settings. So all that's the same. The only thing that's different is instead of mumble listening to your sound card which in the first video was right here we're now going to tell it to listen to whatever's on the loopback and then for FL Digi if you had this in receive it would monitor whatever's on the sound card which would be the output of mumble so on the playback tab mumble's listening at 83 percent volume to the sound card and FL Digi is playing both to the sound card, the ES1371, and the loopback. So once you're done with that and everything's set up and sounded pretty good, just click out of it. And you can set these side by side. And you
you should be good to go. So it's this is only going to hear what's sent by FL Digi, and as you see, the icon turns red. And we've tested it, so let's test it on the the loopback server now. Click mumble somewhere so that you can get the settings up here. Again, we'll check our volume. That's right. Okay. Let's check what we sound like using the loopback test. Server, apply. Don't forget to hit none and apply, otherwise you'll be stuck in server mode and nobody's going to be able to hear you. We'll go back to the input and we should just get a hear the tone and hear it back from the server. Let's try yes. So that second one is what you're going to sound like to everybody else that's listening on Mumble. And it sounds pretty close to what it sounds like to you on yours, and you're, you're doing pretty good. And I would send a file, uh, if you really want to do this, and really test it, then just send FL Digi without the simultaneous. So just send it to the loopback alone at this volume. I think we had it up about there. So for right now we're just going to send it to the loopback. That means we won't hear it. But we hear it coming back. So that's what it sounds like without hearing it first from your sound card. This is what it sounds like to everybody else because it's going to the server in California and bouncing back to you and only you can hear it while you're in this mode. Let's go to the audio output. So we're still in loopback test here. Okay, so let's send a little bit. Let's send something to make sense. You can also right click in here, insert a text file if you had a document, and it would send that. While you're sending that, you can also go into configure, modems, and change some of these settings to see exactly how you would like yourself to be heard to everybody else. So you can do this as far as the raise cosine, uh, rise and fall time on this edge timing, the dot, dash to dot ratio, the weighting, and you can even try different edge shapes between Hanning and Blackman. All this remains active during sending so you can change it and immediately hear what you're sounding like. And in general, remember to hit save if you like once you get the settings the way you want them. This down here is an attenuator so I'm at minus 8 dB and that, that also helps as far as setting up the audio and this goes up to 0 dB and it goes down to 20 or so, minus 20. Okay, so pretty satisfied with the way it sounded. I didn't hear any pops or clicks, so these particular settings are okay as far as the output delay and the default jitter buffer. And also, this is one way to test your audio per packet. So I had this one set at 10 milliseconds and it did pretty good. I didn't hear any pops or clicks. So let's see if they're in the same way we'll test it this way as well so I'll click this at 10 and 10 we'll hit apply and let's see if we hear any pops
So there's a couple there. So I'm going to turn it back up to 20. And since I'm running this video inside uh, VMware, it's going to be a little extra problem with latency anyway. So this using VMware, I may not be able to handle it. So I'm going to click Apply, and we'll test it again. That sounded pretty good. So those settings seem to, to do better. So audio per packet at 20 milliseconds for me and 20 for the default jitter buffer and the output delay seem to work the best. So once you're done and satisfied with the way you sound, in this, don't forget to get out of the loopback test, hit none, click apply, and OK. And that should take you out of there. I'm going to get out of this mumble for just a second and come back in. And let's see what happens. And again, here's the information. Instead of what I have in username, put your call sign here, please. That's been our mutual agreement with everybody, so we know who each, each other is. We can look each other up on QRZ and, and other sites where we're, we have ham radio information, so we can get to know each other a little better. Okay, we'll click Connect. And there we are. Go into the testing room. And now let's see, with Pulse Audio, the way it's set up. Let's see if it changed anything. Usually it does. So for mumble microphone again it's using the normal sound card so we're going to need to change that back to monitor of loopback. Now you don't have to hit anything else once you change it it's changed. So I'm also going to turn this down just a little bit. And playback FL Digi was just using loopback, so let's use simultaneous output. This is only if you want to hear your own side tone. And a lot of people do, so that's why I've provided a way for you to do that. Uh, trying, to, trying to research uh, pulse audio and see if there was a way to do this, and this is the best method that I was able to find. So now we're at simultaneous outputs. We're not in loopback anymore, so we should hear it. And there we go. Let's turn it up just a little bit. A little bit more. So you turn this up till you're satisfied it's loud enough for you. And then double check the settings. Make sure it's not too loud here since it's doing simultaneous. And that's about right. So that's good enough. So now you're set up, and that's the basic setup, how to get an all software solution where you can send using FL Digi and hear your own side tone using the Pulse Audio volume control, the Pulse Audio preferences for simultaneous, let me go and then, uh, I didn't want to click that, let's do PA preferences again. And again, this is the Pulse Audio Preferences. Just go all the way to the right to the simultaneous. Make sure that's clicked. That's all you have to do. And you can forget about this. The, re the Pulse Audio Volume Control does the rest. And that's pretty much it. This is pretty much how most people are doing this, uh, especially if you're a QRQ op. Hearing your uh, tones falling behind your typing speed sometimes kind of slows you down. So a lot of the upper QRQ guys like to turn the side tone off. They don't like to listen to it. W3NJZ was one of those and I also like to do it that way myself. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email AA0HW via the QRZ listing. Thank you.